you okay? Let's. This is the SML response to some of the things that the president's statement captured. And regardless, if this is even a Ghanaian company, as has been stated, if there are questions and concerns, we have to raise them so that we get answers to it. Good. It serves all Very well. And our Very well. are good. Very well. Because you cannot say that because it's a Ghanaian company. No, no, no. I didn't say that for so once. Findings suggest fees under five years contract amount to one billion CDs was false. SML disagrees with findings. No needs assessment was done. But this is the KPMG report. They indicated that no needs assessment was done. As I read earlier, SML disagrees that transaction audit and external price verification w wasn't done. They also talk about a number of things that they disagree with. Also yes, makes uh, problems, let's improve uh, the system as we have it. Certainly. But not bastardize okay. uh, the whole process. They say the exonerates SML and confirms the need for the company's proven services. But this is an issue which we will come to. So these allegations of impropriety, they give details of debunking the false claim of $100 million paid to SML and refuse the 10-year contract claims as made by the Fourth Estate and Manasseh. But was there a real need for the services? It's one angle of the conversation that we'll have this morning. Uh, Professor Jampo, I'll bring you here at this point. To take him. Well, um, I, I think we should be... Let, let, let's take note of this. We have um, been bastardizing President Akufuado for not doing enough in the fight against corruption. And generally, the posture of this particular region does not um, help um, in the fight against corruption. That's why my own teacher, Professor Jimabwedi, once said publicly that as for President Akufuado, his track record in the fight against corruption is in tatters. And so that is what we know. And um, we've been asking that there will be some actions on the part of the president so that um, he will leave a legacy of having done a U-turn and having done something against this um, damning um, description of his regime, regime. Now, so when this <laughs> SML deal um, came up, I think we were all concerned um, about what was going on. And it appears that because of the, the posture of the regime in fighting corruption, even if it does something that is worth commendable, we don't want to see it. I was looking at you when you were projecting the president's, you know, the president's uh, response. You took your time and did it one after the other. I was the one who told you that project SML's response to you. And when you did that, you were just rushing through it. I think that, yes, we must do all we can to fight against corruption. And we must do all we can to take regimes on that appear to be condoning acts of corruption. But if somebody is also trying to help and we get into whatever activity the person is undertaking on behalf of the state, and we find out that, well, there are positives and then there are negatives. Let us have a balanced view of things. And if there is a clear need for the services that are being delivered for the state, let us make that point. If there is a need for some adjustment, mutations, and changes here and there, just to make sure that the thing that is the service that is being delivered works well. Um, for Ghana and for all of us, I think we should be talking along that line. But it appears that because the regime is noted for clearing people and all that, you know, clear, clearing people even before they are investigated, I mean, we have that, we have fixated in that kind of um, um, uh, posturing, and so we don't want to see anything. We are calling for, of course, I was the one who wrote publicly to the president mm -hmm. that we should have the report released to all of us. 
And so I associate, I still associate myself with the call for the report to be released. But it should be released on condition that we read. The discussions here that we've held, it tells me that clearly we have not read even the scanty report recommendation from the president and then the scanty response from SML. We have not done thorough reading of the two. I am an academic. What I can do is to look at the both reports, no, the, the report, uh, rep response from the president and then the response from SML and then make a judgment. You cannot look at one side of the coin and then ignore the other. So in reading the two, okay, looking at um, the response from the president and then also looking at the response from the SML, I mean, certain things come up quite you know, clearly. Of course, if we, or unless we say we disagree or we doubt what the president is saying and we, we all must see the president, um, the report, if we want to base our judgment and our analysis on the response from the president and response from SML, then we can say that contrary to what we were told, that um, some, the contract was going to be 10 years. Um, it's come out that it was not 10, it, it was not 10 years. And let us make this point that, look, if we will still want to base our analysis on a document, the documentary, then we shouldn't have all called for an investigation into the matter. But once an investigation has come, and it's, um, an investigation has been conducted, an audit has been conducted, and then findings have been made, we cannot throw away the president's response the findings of the investigation and then the response of, of SML and then just zoom in on the on the on the documentary because in the documentary we're told that the contract was going to be 10 years and it it, it, it turned out that it was not 10 years rather oh, five years that is the minimum. No, no, let me finish i mean you you when i didn't like some of the things we were saying but i kept quiet okay <laughs> and then also we're, we're told Martin that no, no, please please uh, we're told uh, that uh, 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 gentlemen hold on let me we were told that some hundred million dollars um have been paid it turned out that it, it was false we were told that um, the work of the SML was duplication, but it turns out that if you look at what the president's re response said, there is no duplication of work with respect to the work of the National Petroleum Authority. Hey. I mean, from, Wait, I'm, I'm, where, I'm basing where, what I'm saying. No, that is where false. exactly um, there is a clear need. If there is a clear need for the downstream um, for the downstream petroleum audit service provided by. SML. Oh, if there is, the then, uh, no, 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 please. The no. If there is, no, no, please. Let me, so, let me, so the let system me, that let me, let me has put in yeah, place doesn't that, work. Let me, oh. let me. Well, I'm, I'm judging. I'm, I'm doing my analysis based on what the president has said and then what the response that it's has. It's false. Has, has, That's okay. not made. Well, you can say it's false, well, but let me, let me make my point, Martin. And then also we are told that GRA awarded the 2023 consolidated contract to SML, and. SML says that it followed due processes. Um, there is um, a concern that due processes were not um, followed. Um, it should have gone to Parliament, and then it didn't go to Parliament. And you made that point that if somebody, uh, if the state contracting a private business person refuses to follow due processes, why do you blame the incompetence of the state on a private the whole machinery of state? I mean, and then also. Um, we must make the point that SML has a risk-reward performance-based contract, which SML fully finances without a PESWA from the government. We finance, and then if the reward comes, then then the but point, the, 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 the point, the point. But you, you will not see the point. Okay, 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 no, no, no. Point. The point yes. has also been made that um, some one billion um, C, um, dollars or something was paid, and then SML has come out to say that no. You cannot talk about that amount without talking about taxes, 31% mm -hmm. that are being deducted as source and um, cost of investment and other um, um, related uh, matters. Other related um, costs that we have to deduct from. So generally, this is my view. This is my view. It appears that, you see, Reverend Charles Akununu, he was um, an Assembly of God pastor in Sorpon, who pastored me mm -hmm. when I was growing up. He used to say carbology politics. Okay, carbology. Um, it appears that we have the penchant for doing carbology politics on ourselves. So you put crabs 
okay, in a bowl, and then one of them begins to climb out of the bowl. That is a Cape Coast then, philosophy. Yeah. Somebody explained to me just last week. <laughs> one of them mm -hmm. begins to climb out of the bowl, the rest will pull him. Anybody who tries to um, climb, then the rest will be pulling him. I think mm -hmm. that you made that fantastic point or something, that a point that I wanted to make. Look, if this deal is problematic, yes, let is. us look at the areas where the problems are, okay, mm -hmm. and fine-tune or address those problems. Because clearly the case has been made that there's a need for what they are doing and there's a need for them to continue. But there are challenges. So let's identify the areas of challenges and then, improve. and then improve upon them. Rather than throwing everything that or talking in a manner that, in my view, discourages private investors in Ghana who may want to sink their money into investments for the purposes of generating employment, you know, for all of us. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I am a bit worried because... When it's about stealing of lithium, nobody undertakes an investigative journalism into it. When it's about paying 5% royalties, please, 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 please oh, you oh, let oh, me finish. Oh, oh. See, I'm passionate about this. When it comes to payment of just 5% royalties to us for mining gold and then foreigners taking 95%, oh, no, no, nobody, nobody undertakes a private investigation into it because it is being done by foreigners when it's about exploring oil and then we are getting less than 15 percent gaddafi was saying that if you take oil from my land i take 70 percent you go with 30 percent in our part of the world we are taking less than 15 percent and the white and, and, man and we are still happy uh, and, and the white man is going that's, away that's with not, the rest that's not and uh, no, please, no, please, no, please 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 no, please you if no, you no, have no, the chance no, but, but, but today i don't but, want but, to be angry but, but, please, but, but, please for example if let you're me making, finish it's okay so yeah, let me yeah, finish yeah, if you're point. making a point that is that is not accurate mm -hmm. uh, we can just draw your attention to yeah. it well, it doesn't necessarily mean that well i mean but don't don't distort don't distort my talk you have to be we get 50 55 so it's not you see, what? the 15 is not oh, yeah. that you put oh, yeah. taxes. Yeah, so apart from no, what you take there, right? No, we don't. Please, please. Taxes. Check, check your facts. Oh, okay. Don't worry. Please, please. That's what I'm also saying. This, this, this is something. That's what I'm also saying. I'm also rating next. Do you know what I'll do? Let's not go there. I'll come to you. 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 If it's about... No, no, no. So my point is... Hold on. You look at that point and everything. No, no. Okay. Taxes, everybody will put tax. The point I am trying... Yes. The point I'm making is... The point I'm making is that... When it's really about the foreigner the doing some of these things ah, against us, we, we have a certain, is it morbid fear or morbid respect for, for, for the foreigner? And so, hey, Ubruni, that one is a foreigner doing it, so let us allow them. But if it's about us, we tend to all of a sudden go no, into this, phobia. this, this phobia. crabology politics, this, is, uh, this sense of envy, this sense of skin pain and hatredness. I think it doesn't help. Please. This is my position. I'm saying that if you look, if, if, if you have read extensively what the president's response said, and then if you have read um, 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 what SML has also said in response to the work of, 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 um, of KPMG, and then if you have read around, and if you've gone around there to study what they do, you have, you, you to have, have gone to the yes, SML you, yes, office. You have to have a certain, a, a certain understanding, a certain picture that, look, Clearly, they are doing something that is right. But clearly, the report also say that there are things that are not being done um, well. So what do we do? Do we decide to look at the things that are not being done well and then throw the whole thing away? Is it that the state was giving the SM SML money to do what it was supposed to do or the SML itself was self-funding itself and then basing its reward, you know, its its returns on reward performance, you know, contract, you know, the But do you know that, if you, since you so said you, you've that, read the report, you've read the president's statement yeah. and KPM, uh, sorry, SML's response as well to the president's statement, because you and I haven't seen yeah. the full details yeah, of yeah. the report. I mean, and we are calling for the full details of the report, yeah. Uh, KPMG also raised questions about the said investments that SML says they have made mm -hmm. because they didn't provide any documentation to prove. 
that does not no. discount no. No, the but, fact that but, they made investment. But no, 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 no. But I mean, okay. I'm asking, no, no, I, I get yes. you. No, I get you. I mean, you've heard me loud and clear. Yes. I've said that. You see, you are refusing to admit here as a host mm -hmm. that something good is being done. Yes. Okay? For but, but all that you are doing is to look at the, 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 the challenges the with the deal. And I'm saying that it is not fair. What you raise is legitimate. If, if that is what KPMG said, mm -hmm. it is legitimate. Okay. If it is true, let us interrogate. But my right. point is that in trying to do the interrogation, All let right. us be balanced. So that my view is the thing, they, they may be doing something right, but things may also not be, um, there may be challenges here and there. Especially the area mm -hmm. of not uh, seeking Contracting. parliamentary yeah, approval. No, no, and no, wait, wait, wait. The area, yeah. no, the, the, the public procurement. No, 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 no. no. no I, I, I want to I'm sitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting 30 seconds that, to you. 30 seconds. I'm, I'm sitting one sentence. It is your In time. In the report that you yourself read, our uh, host, it said PPA regularized the contract along it with It is in there. It is there. It is in mm -hmm. there. So, so that's 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 no, okay, wait, but wait. we don't want a situation where listen, we don't want a situation where you have to go without PPA and then later mm. it comes in, they come in to regularize. Okay, I mean it is a fair point to make. Okay, but the point is, let us not involve ourselves so much in this carbology politics where so everything because there are challenges, Ooh, everything so we see about cool. about it, we say it's wrong. I am I am I am worried because mm -hmm. look, we don't have jobs. In the country, and so and under Jeff for who declared a golden age of business. Okay, one of the things that one of the interventions was to put in place mechanisms that would enable the private sector in the country to thrive, indigenous businesses to flourish so that they can offer employment. And so, whilst we seek employment, whilst we put in place some of these interventions to prevent the mass exodus of our young people from the shores of our country to other people's country. Let us also be careful to ensure that we don't say things that would frustrate or discourage tomorrow a potential local investor who will say that, look, if I go into this and then there are challenges, people would come in and bash. I'm not saying let us not point out the challenges. Okay. If the challenges are there, let us discuss. Right. And so that's why I am very... I am very, <laughs> I, I, I am very, I was very excited when I read the president's acceptance of the recommendation and portions of which um, he used the word may. You may terminate, you may terminate, you may terminate. I was expecting the president, executive president, to give directives that go ahead and terminate. But it appears that he's, he's seen, seen certain things in the contract, mm -hmm. uh, in the deal, that makes it quite difficult for you to outrightly say that let's throw away the baby. With the with the uh, with the bad water, and I think it's it's something that we must all appreciate. So I'm winding okay. up by saying that. And commend look, the president look, for what? Well, for once, President Kufuado, you have done well, but release the entire the full report. President Kufuado, for once, you have done well, but release the entire report so that the whole idea of why are you shrouding this whole thing in secrecy and all that, Martin and Cody are here. They will read. I will read. Others may not read. But you, for the, for, for, for the purposes of transparency, just release the report and then let us see whether there are discrepancies between your responses and mm -hmm. then what is actually contained in the, in the entire in report. The, the but generally, from what I see, reading all the documents together, we'll do a, a lot of disservice to ourselves and we'll do a lot of carbology politics if we say that we should throw away um, the baby with the with the dirty water there are good things in what they are doing there are challenges where there are challenges let us try to see how we um, the authorities can work with them together with them to address the challenges so that they will continue to meter the you know our 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 okay. uh, petroleum um, products well, 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 well every question that i have asked this morning is based on the same documents that you have so if you are asking why we are not acknowledging what the, the company is doing, it is based on the same concerns that are captured in the president's statement mm -hmm. that I ask questions mm -hmm. on. We have all admitted here that there are concerns, mm -hmm. there are issues that need to be addressed. So if I'm asking those questions based on those issues and also acknowledging the fact that there has to be some audit in place, 
it doesn't question in any way the, the fairness that I'm approaching this um, conversation um, with. Uh, Mr. I think that Mr. Respectfully, Hose, I think I, I, respectfully, I, I, but, 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 but I, I think I think I, I, I mean, no, you you've, you've stated it. I don't want us to go back and yeah, forth. Bro, I just wanted to be him. very clear. Yeah. Where you that on this we, SML, we when have, you went there, no, 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 no don't worry. We, we, <laughs> I, I want to state hey. clearly that if we are oh, asking man, questions, Martin, it's not being on, on state of unfairness. Uh, we are asking the questions based on the concerns that have been raised by observation of this same report. Mm. In fact, this same statement that the president issued. So it is not on the basis of unfairness and, and well, but the point I'm making, I'm, the point I'm making that, is that you are company. you are you are oh, okay. measuring on the on the on so, the concerns so, and the challenges and talking as if nothing. But I, I think would, we have acknowledged that good. there are some challenges you in place. Done that. No, as the challenges we all have acknowledged, but you are <laughs> measuring on the challenges and going about your questioning as if nothing good. Has happened, and I'm saying that for no, us but, to be but, fair, but, but if let, there is no, something, let, 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 example, let us say pro, something. Pro, 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 if there are challenges, let, let, let us highlight let, the challenges, and then have right. a holistic discussion. Let, let's but establish you, you, this. You, you, I think you, that you we, are, we stated earlier that there is a need for an audit as to whether what is in place right now satisfies. So you stated earlier that there should be as to whether what is in place right now satisfies what has to be done to address those challenges. We all need to confront it. That there are questions that need to be answered. The right things need to be done. If there is somebody who is claiming to be doing something that is not the case, we all need to raise questions no, about but it. No, because but nobody is I, challenging that. But, but you, I you, mean, I, that I, one I, is I, an established I, thing. But absolutely. I'm saying that in trying to do that, you have to look at both sides. The way and manner you are going about it, I mean, the discussions, the way and manner we are going about it. You, you so mean, that as nothing, we are having this yes, discussion, yes, yes, yes. There's nothing, but we have, there's nothing we have looked at both sides. And I'm saying that, but okay, there's gentlemen, good, let us say, yeah, yes, indeed, person. indeed. Okay, gentlemen, hold on. Let me bring in Bright Simmons, who is the vice president of uh, Imani Africa. Uh, 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 I'll come to you I know. A bit. Um, because yeah, I know I there's that demand for this also to be made mm. you um, to Parliament. But by Simmons is joining us, he, he has to leave in, in a bit. He's in transit. Simmons, thank you very much for joining us here on Key Point. First of all, because of this aspect of the report, in fact, the statement from the president that indicates that the upstream petroleum and minerals audit could be a major source of revenue for the state. And if there are leakages, the impact could be significant. KPMG is making recommendations for reviewing these services by conducting a comprehensive needs assessment and engaging stakeholders with diverse interests in the respective sectors. Furthermore, KPMG recommended the need for a value for money assessment in the contract performance process. Any contract of the provision of these services should comply with section 33 of the PFMA. Now, let me state that we are getting so many messages. Professor Jampo himself has said before that he has been to the SML office to go and interact with them and so on. So I cannot state anywhere that whatever some of you are saying what, what he we, we don't know that for sure but he has admitted on the show that he went to the kpmg office to go and no, no, interact with them but but sorry the, the sml go, office yeah, he said he went to, to the sml to office learn. to go and yes to go and, in, to it. Go and learn what, what so, are so he he, anyway, he did this carry on so yes so i don't i needed to make that clear yeah, that you you are, you have stated that you went to the SML. What happened when you went there? No, 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 no. I don't. I, I, as, as to what happened when you went there, it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not an armchair researcher. No, 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 no. no. Huh? Bryce Simmons, how does the SML come into the picture in this entire need for the upstream petroleum and minerals audit, which KPMG says could be a major source of revenue to the state? source of tax uh, revenue for the government uh, is the petroleum and fuel sector. You buy petrol, you buy diesel, uh, maybe for the house you buy LPG, uh, airplanes in this country buy aviation fuel, etc. All of that, um, all of those sales uh, have tax components which generate revenue for the government. 
Now, one of the challenges we've had as a country is making sure people pay the right amount of tax. Now, in case of petroleum and fuel in particular, we have a very high uh, component of our consumption that is imported. So when you import the fuel, um, you are typically a line to see in a category we call BDCs or bulk distribution companies. And they bring in the fuel through the ports. But because of the way we've applied the taxes, the taxes are not applied necessarily at the import level. So it's not like if you want to bring in goods, we, we don't make most of our money through duties like we do in some other goods. We make a lot of more of our money when it comes to the fuel taxes, uh, further downstream. So when we say downstream, we mean let's think of the ports when you bring the goods into the, uh, the, 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 the oil uh, from the production point, whether it's in, from the sea, which is if it's a local production, or in the case where you are important, let's say when it arrives to the port, as it gets distributed towards the consumer, we call that downstream. So a lot of the taxes are at the downstream level, and that is typically the depots and the, the filling stations. The problem is when the fuel first arrives, if we're not going to charge all the taxes at the point of importation, then we have to find a way to make sure that we are tracking how much fuel came in and how much fuel has gone into the retail level so that we show that the fuel that came into the country, we've taxed all of it. Now, the problem is that the government is worried that in between the fuel arriving at the port, being put in storage and being distributed to the retail level, there is a lot of room for people to escape paying for the taxes, right? So essentially, you go and load the fuel where there's no tax on it. You go and sell it. And when you collect the tax from the consumer, you don't remit to the government. And unless the government is aware of how much you're selling, the government is not able to track carefully how much taxes you should have remitted as, a, as, a, as a, an oil marketing company. So there have been a lot of interventions to try and address this. The latest um, set of interventions address multiple problems that are connected, one of which is the smuggling, the adulteration that attempts to, um, um, sometimes they, you know, if they look at taxes are lower on uh, particular uh, fuel, then they will mix it with that the fuel where the taxes are higher and all of these things lead to revenue losses. So the government has implemented a lot of measures. They have a company that used, you know, called Authentics that now has the local agent that helps them to uh, put unique dyes into the fuel and attempt to uh, make it impossible for people to do dilution or adulteration and things like that. They have a company that is helping them track the products through the supply chain uh, based on a software we, uh, they call ERDMS. Remember that there are two main regulators here. There's a the National Petroleum Authority, which has the primary responsibility for regulating the industry and which has um, hired or engaged multiple vendors, at the very least two main vendors, um, the, the, actually maybe three more main vendors, the ones that are running the ERDMS, the ones that are doing the tracking and putting the flow meters at various depots and things like that, or Rock Africa, and the one that is doing the, the traceability, making sure that the fuel is not diluted and things like that. And we pay millions and millions of dollars for all these services in an effort to stop fraud. So that's the NPA. And then you have the GRA, which is the one that actually collects uh, and manages the taxes. And they have also, as you know, implemented a very comprehensive system at the ports called the ICUMS. Uh, and through this method, all the goods that are coming to the country are tracked. There are two problems that we tend to confuse. One is um, establishing liability, knowing that somebody owes tax, and the second one is collecting the tax. They are not the same problem. And both of them lead to revenue losses. So you can know that this company owes tax, but then it's just not paying. And then there are instances where, you know, what they are called that declaration and things like that, the company manages to fool the system and therefore doesn't tell you how much total fuel is picked up. So the... Uh, first instance that we hear about this company uh, uh, was when they emerged in an attempt to uh, and get involved in the destination inspection area. So basically, uh, even with the ICOMS, which is basically a platform, a software platform, there are still auditing entities, entities that are trying to make sure you are telling the truth because you can put wrong information into the the. the software platforms and like of it. And West Blue was one of those type of companies where you can think of them as a verification service. 
Um, and when the government decided that they are going to insert SML into this whole auditing space, the first attempt was to go to the Public Procurement Authority and require um, single source approval for that to be achieved. Unfortunately, they did not get the, the approval because this, the Public Procurement Authority looked into the matter and decided that you know the, the, the single source arrangement didn't make sense. And that information, nobody has published it. Nobody ha you know, has seen it. But it was clear that they did some assessment. They concluded that it was not fit for purpose. The government then finds a way to get them still involved as a subcontractor to West Blue. And as you know, West Blue was eventually kicked out. And this company was then brought on board to take their role. While they are taking their role, that then created a track record for the company, which nobody had knew, knew before, and which we now know is owned by some timber merchant um, and a relative. So this company then now having been established and inserted into the auditing space in Ghana, then succeeds in getting itself involved in the downstream sector on the basis that the existing companies that are doing the tracking themselves could be shady. And so they will come in and then introduce additional flow meters and things to track the, the fuel. The issue that are, then arises is whether or not, and there are three key issues, whether or not this company has any track record in this space, and there's a reason why we must trust them more than we must trust other auditing companies in the country, including those that are already doing this kind of work, those that are providing the ERDMS, those like Rock Africa that are providing flow meters. Remember that the MPA is already spending a large amount of money implementing these flow meters in every depot in the country, both at the retail end and at the wholesale end. And they are connecting all of that info, uh, infrastructure together using the ERDMS. So while we are talking about SML, more government money is being spent to do exactly the, 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 the objectives that SML is purportedly uh, achieving on, on behalf of Ghana, of the government of Ghana. Now, the question therefore is why, what is special about SML? Who are they? What nature of, uh, what is their technology? Where did it come from? That makes them so superior. That's something that the MP and everybody else has already been doing is considered inferior that until they come in, you know, and if what the MP and the rest are doing are inferior, then why are we still paying for that? Why don't we just simply throw all of them out and let SML alone do the job? So that's the, the, the first uh, issue that arises. The second issue that arises is that then the decision was made that they will be paid based on the volumes of products that they are more or less monitoring. So essentially, if they monitor 100 million, they get paid for 100 million liters. That makes no sense whatsoever because um, the assumption being, and we'll go into this in perhaps some, some detail, the assumption being that if the fuel, um, our, the fuel consumption goes up and taxes go up, that must be due to their work. Now we challenge that you know, in great detail and I hope that the chance will come in to explain. So that is how this company came in and that is why the issue around their involvement became problematic. Because when the fourth estate did their, their investigation, they confirmed that the multiple levels at MPA level, GRE level, and the rest of it, that the existing framework mm -hmm. is what was being used to determine taxes in the country and to track and monitor taxes in the country. And that existing framework is already integrated in the, in the ecosystem. System. So whatever SML was doing was not what was being used. They were not producing the information that was being used to determine taxes in the country. So you have to ask yourself then, on what basis can we attribute anything to them of value, right? Because if you think of it very critically, they've not been able to provide any information about under declaration that have led to any prosecutions that show that some companies in the, in the sector are under declaring or they are hiding. When it comes to revenue losses due to tax issues, some of it is, is plainly a matter of the companies not being able to pay even when you know that they've loaded the goods, uh, the, the fuel and they sold the fuel. So those losses are not solved by knowing that they have the liability. We already know they have the liability. So what exact contribution have they made to this process of trying to make sure that taxes are paid? For which reason we should pay them a billion Ghana cities over the last five years. Think about it, a billion Ghana cities. So that really is where we are uh, in terms of an understanding the um, I, I, sudden involvement I, I, of this company in this I, I see but but then again you see uh, right that billion Ghana cities they in their response say that uh, the KPMG report did not factor in the taxes they have paid to the GRA plus the investments that they have made but in the same response of SML they are rejecting the claims by KPMG 
as captured in the president's statement, that it partially delivered on several requirements regarding the transaction agreement. In fact, they say that they delivered fully on their obligations outlined in the contract that is captured in the statement that they sml issued and, and you you based on what you're saying it does not reflect the reality of the situation well i'll just explain to you right that in the setup that we have for fuel if you bring the fuel from overseas um it's captured in the current icons arrangement and that you know, if GRE is doing its work well, if the ICOMS platform is working, and it cannot be that it's working for everything, but only for fuel, right? So whatever it is that is happening in milk, in sugar, in whatever, is what is happening in fuel. Now, the argument is that if the ICOMS system is working, we know the fuel that arrived. And the system has now been configured such that we track the fuel from the port to the different depots and eventually to the retail outlets. And you cannot load fuel in this country except you register it in the ERDMS. And there are flow meters that have been implemented by Rock Africa and others in the in the depots. If all of that is not working, was a contract, and they delivered according to the contract. It's meaningless if the contract doesn't make sense. What is the piece of abundant addition of SML when we are paying money for a system that is already end to end, and if the system is per, per chance, not end to end. Then why don't we extend the existing system to be end to end? If, because we're already paying for it. Why do we have to bring another vendor to install another set of flow meters all over the place and then claim that they are the ones that are doing the end to end verification? Then we should stop everybody else in the system, throw them all out, and leave them alone. I see. Or well, that is not clear to you, Alfred. Well, yes, it is clear. Uh, but then again, SML, and I'm referring to their responses indicating their productive performance was the basis for subsequent recommendation and awarding of the downstream petroleum audit contract. That's what they're saying, that there's, there's proven record of their performance. But with what you're saying, raising fundamental questions about even the specific impact that they have had, it begs the question as to exactly what is happening, whether if the MPA system is working as was captured in the documentary, and whether there was a real need for another third party arrangement when there was a system in place, as was outlined by Mustafa Ahmed or Dr. Mustafa Ahmed in, in that particular documentary that we played? No, because we've had increases in the past when we didn't have them. So if you think that you, know, you are stopping under declaration, then what we need it's a model that gives us some insight into what is the average under declaration in the market. And that would have come when you were doing the transition, when they first came. Because when they first came, they implemented these systems. The question is, how many companies did they catch doing under declaration with their new systems? That would have given us the baseline. That, okay, based on the intervention, we have a sense of how much under declaration is in the system. So think of it like they were, we all consume 100 liters. But the truth is that we consume 105 liters. But because some people don't disclose the five liters, that's how much we are losing. And the task corresponding to that is 10 cities. If you come into the, the system and the increase of fuel consumption goes to 120, we don't say that all that 120 is your work. We say that, okay, it has increased by 20, but if you are not there, five uh, liters will not have been accounted for. So your contribution is five out of the 20 not the 120. We cannot base our analysis on your work on 120. And we cannot base on 20. Because two things, the consumption may have increased anyway. And then secondly, we don't know for sure that every single liter that increased in the consumption of, you know, that increase in consumption, every liter in increase in consumption will have led to evasion of tax. You are getting the logic. So think about it very carefully. There are two things there to bear in mind. Uh, because of increasing it in the volume of cars, increasing the number of consumption, other economic factors, uh, some products will see greater demand. When they see greater demand, some people may not pay tax, but the vast majority will pay tax. When the majority of Ghanaians didn't pay tax on fuel, et cetera, et cetera, the system will have collapsed. 
we have seen that already in the falling tax taxes from petroleum. So some people will not pay tax, but they are not the majority. So we need to say, okay, and that increase, what percentage of it will have been lost in terms of tax take because people refuse to disclose? It is that segment that we have, we have to isolate and say that your technology is helping us stop that. So you get a percentage of that. That's not what is happening. They're getting a percentage of all fuel consumed in Ghana. Every time you buy fuel in Ghana, a certain check goes to them because they claim if they were not there, uh, the, the, the company that you bought the fuel from would not have remitted the tax. I mean, is this a logical argument? When as I've explained to you, there are already a lot of measures in place to prevent uh, exactly that uh, possibility. And as I will show in a moment, we know for a fact that MPA claims that due to the systems that they put in place, that's not SML systems, they have been catching smuggling, they have been catching tax evasion, uh, etc. Oh, either MPA is lying and their systems they, are, they have are useless and we should throw them all out and stop paying for them. Mm -hmm. Or SML is lying and the system they have are useless and not adding any value. So but that's we cannot have multiple systems claiming to do the same thing. And that, pay for all of the money. Yeah, absolutely. If we're uh, talking about multiple systems, if the NPA is saying that their system is supposed to be checking the same things that SML has also been brought in to check, then it raises fundamental questions about the, the, the value for money. And that is also one question that KPMG in itself, based on what the president issued, is asking. So that the increase as cap captured cannot be attributed to the work of SML in any way? Right, this increase in the volumes that we, was captured in, in the report that was issued by the president on aspects of the KPMG report? No, because we've had increases in the past when we didn't have them. So if you think that you, know, you are stopping under declaration, then what we need is a model that gives us some insight into what is the average under declaration in the market. And that would have come when you were doing the transition, when they first came. Because when they first came, they implemented these systems. The question is, how many companies did they catch doing under declaration with their new systems? That would have given us the baseline. That, okay, based on the we have a sense of how much under declaration is in the system. So think of it like they were, we all consume 100 liters. But the truth is that we consume 105 liters. But because some people don't disclose the 5 liters, that's how much we are losing. And the task corresponding to that is 10 cities. If you come into the, the system, and the increase of fuel consumption goes to 120. We don't say that all that 120 is your work. We say that, okay, it has increased by 20, but if you are not there, five uh, liters will not have been accounted for. So your contribution is five out of the 20, not the 120. We cannot base our analysis on your work on 120. And we cannot base on 20 because two things that Consumption may have increased anyway. And then secondly, we don't know for sure that every single liter that increased in the consumption of, you know, that increase in consumption, every liter in increase in consumption will have led to evasion of tax. You are getting the logic. So think about it very carefully. There are two things there to bear in mind. Uh, because of increasing it in the volume of cars, increasing the number of consumption, other economic factors, uh, some products will see greater demand. When they see greater demand, some people may not pay tax, but the vast majority will pay tax. But well, the majority of Ghanaians didn't pay tax on fuel, et cetera, et cetera. The system will have collapsed. We'll have seen that already in the falling tax taxes from petroleum. So some people will not pay tax, but they are not the majority. So we need to say, okay, and that increase, what percentage of it will have been lost in terms of tax take because people refuse to disclose it is that segment that we have, we have to isolate and say that your technology is helping us stop that. So you get a percentage of that. That's not what is happening. They're getting a percentage of all fuel consumed in Ghana. Every time you buy fuel in Ghana, a certain check goes to them because they claim if they were not there, uh, the, the, the company that you bought the fuel from would not have remitted the tax. I mean, is this a logical argument? When as I've explained to you, there are already a lot of measures in place to prevent uh, exactly that. Uh, possibility. And as I will show in a moment, we know for a fact that MPA claims that due to the systems that they put in place, that's not SML systems, they have been catching smuggling, they have been catching tax evasion, oh, uh, etc. Oh, oh, over the period. So, but, but Either MPA is lying and their systems... But, but there's a clear, this is what 
And it's a very important question that you ask, and that's one that runs through a number of the things that my guests in studio have said. But right quickly and finally, before I let you go, I don't want you to just show me that, that graph that you keep making reference to that indicates that there's a consistent rise in the consumption of petroleum products over the period. So this increase that uh, if you look at page four of the president's statement, quotes that there's a clear need for the downstream petroleum audit services provided by SML. And GRA and the state have benefited from these services since SML commenced providing them. And according to the president's statement, there has been an increase in volumes of 1.7 billion liters and an increase in tax revenue to the state of 2.5 billion. So what counter information or facts do you have to disprove what the presidency is captured as making reference to what KPMG said in the reports that we haven't seen. Right. On the data from um, from 1999 and as you can see we have a certain pattern where generally the fuel consumption in the country increases you can see it yourself right so from 1999 we steadily have increases until we had uh, an economic crisis with the power crisis and things like that in 2014 if you remember we went to the IMF and all of those since 20, 20, uh, 2015 until the end of 2016 when doing so ended the IMF program started working and the whole thing picked up its growth again so the first question you have to ask yourself is that uh, um, what do you call them? SML arrived in 2019, started working in 2020. You get it. All these increases that we've been seeing in the, you know, all over this period, you know, that increase that you see clearly in the graph, was it due to just monitoring and tracking from SML technology or something else? So since SML came, for uh, consumption, gasoline and diesel rose until 2021, and then in 2022 they started to fall due to the economic crisis in 2022, as you remember. You remember the 2022 economic crisis. Now, the question is twofold. One is that, what tells us that this increase from 20... Sorry. I, I think that we, we've seen that, that graph that clearly shows the, the incremental volumes over the period since 1999, as you have stated. Bright Simmons, Vice President of Imani Africa, thank you. But Bright is still with us. Stay with, stay with me. And uh, uh, Nelson Ross, and Richard Dafia, would, would come in. I'm, I'm going to go for a quick break, but because I want Zadav Kwemokpo to have his take on this matter after the break, what's, what's your... Just a minute. Oh, oh, no, no. Well, um, and I'll, and I'll I, come to you. Yes, yes. I, I just wanted to make one quick um, point that... Um, let me make this clear mm -hmm. that I'm not a cynic and I do not suffer from the syndrome of the opposition disease where you must oppose all the time or you must praise all the time. I know when to oppose and when to praise. I have a position on this particular disc um, disc um, discussion that okay. I've articulated, but um, I want to restate it again. I visited SML to learn about what they do to be able to get an independent first-hand information about the activities. That's number one. Number two, I have read what the president has said in his response to the KP, KPMG report. Number three, I've also read the SML response to the president's response. And this is my view. First of all, I ask for the president's release of the entire report. I think this one, we have all said it. Number two, I insist that given what I've read and what I've seen and all that, SML is doing something good. But there are issues and concerns that we have all raised here. Let the issues and concerns that have been raised be addressed in a manner 
that deals with any suspicion of corruption and still encourage private local investors to help address our state of joblessness among young people. This is my position. And if um, this position is not being is misunderstood by anybody, I mean, I've stated it clearly. I mean, I'm not okay. here to do anybody's uh, bidding. I speak from my conviction. Thank you. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. Now, some rocks in nature, the family has some more information on this matter. You'd want to stay with us. We're live on 3FM 92.7. Back after this quick break.